Cybercrime is under the microscope in this prescient tale of the seedy underbelly of hacking. No, it's not. Not at all. We saw hackers, so you know what that means. Now it's time for Hello, people of Earth, and welcome to How Did This Get Made? I am your host, Paul Shear, joined as always by the lovely Jason Manzukas. How are you, Jason? Oh, hello, <laughs> Paul. And the very manly June Diane Rayfield. How are you, June? Hello, Paul. <laughs> um, we are talking about the 1995 film Hackers today. And for those of you who haven't seen the film Hackers, here's a quick breakdown. A young boy is arrested by the U.S. Secret Service for writing a computer virus and is banned from using a computer until his 18th birthday. Years later, he and his newfound friends discover a plot to unleash a dangerous computer virus, but they must use their computer skills to find evidence while being pursued by the Secret Service and the evil computer genius behind the virus. Such is Hackers. That is the wow. premise of the 1995 film Hackers that we watched this, uh, this week. And boy, oh boy, Ooh. this has been a movie that has been recommended to us uh, time and time again. I get why. I mean, it is pretty sp- it is pretty spectacularly bad in a way that I feel like we would appreciate, which I did appreciate. Well, I will tell you, I will tell you that what I love about a movie like this is it took such a hard swing at what the future is and oh, yeah. what computers are. And, and what it, the internet looks like. Oh. This, oh, <laughs> it is, and it could not have gotten it more wrong. It, it everything so what is a year. Was this supposed to be taking place in? Well, nineteen ninety five. Yeah, but what it was year present was it made? tense. Nineteen ninety five. Yeah, it was not a futurescape. Yeah. Wait, did you think this movie took place no, in the future? No, I didn't. Okay. But that's why you're saying it took such a. That's well, I took a bold swing at being like took a swing at what that the idea of like, like the what the uh, you know when they're talking about like going into the internet and they had to visualize that like the floating ambiguous oh algorithmic God, kind of looking things over just spa- oh like empty space. Well, I and mean buildings, you know, yeah, too. Well, yeah, buildings I mean, of numbers. This movie starts off with one of my favorite <laughs> openings of He's all time. An eight-year-old hacker, by the way. Uh, yes, he is movie. eight years. When they Whoa. show you the reveal of the little boy who like took down the the whatever is comedically young <laughs> i mean it so the opening of this movie starts almost like a disney movie because felicity huffman is trying this kid who shut down 1500 facilities or whatever and the camera's panning from adult head adult head adult head and then space and then the camera has to go comically down to reveal an eight-year-old sitting yeah. there like Fuck you, yeah. I did it. And it looks like, I mean, when we're saying an eight-year-old, like, I'm talking about um, Jonathan Lipnicki in Jerry Maguire. Yeah. Yes. Like, he, he looks like that kid. little like, of a kid. But there he's is- supposed to be 12. Right, because it's until his 18th birthday. Oh, oh, he's 12. He's not eight. No. I don't oh, think so. He's either, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, but he looks oh, a I, lot I mis- younger I thought he was that. eight years old for some reason. Well, I, I 12 think is a little better, but still very young. He doesn't look 12. He I doesn't think at the 12. end of the day, they keep on saying but it was I'm seven years I'm sorry to go ago. back to this. So you're saying that they were taking a swing at what the internet would look like or just the idea of like, this is the internet well, I now think, in 1995? I think the whole idea of what hackers did, like, for example, there's a part in the movie where Johnny Lee Miller, the main character, is hacking and puts on- the equivalent of Google Glasses. Yeah. Like, so he can, like, hack and literally, like, hit the computer screens in his eye. Like, that's I see not a saying. thing. And, and well, even, like, also, Fisher Stevens in yeah. virtual reality. Oh, like, my God. He's boxing, but also feeling the force of the hit back. Like, it's just, it's too much. And Penn Jillette in that big computer that room. That big computer room <laughs> is such an amazing idea of, like, how are we going to represent the internet? And it is just a big giant room full of like glass boxes with <laughs> with with words and numbers flashing across, as if as if they are living in the computer. One of the climactic scenes in the movie looks like a scene out of a whack-a-mole game from yeah. like a a bad amusement park because it's just all these holes in a brightly lit orange panel and Fisher Stevens. Who's Fisher the, Stevens oh, in this movie, man, I, mean. I love it. I kind of think of this movie as like if Fisher Stevens' character from Short 
short circuit went bad, this is him. <laughs> it is. It, it made me sad for him in this movie. Well, Fisher Stevens did the thing where he's, he's the, the villain. He's the villain, the computer genius uh, who is— Who's also a hacker. Oh, my gosh. He is uh, the plague. He, he rides around on a skateboard. Everybody is on wheels in this. Everybody's, <laughs> this movie might as well be called Everyone's on, Everybody's on Wheels. Nobody is a pedestrian. Everyone gets to and fro with some sort of wheels, be it rollerblades. And yep. the world is— is equipped to oh, yeah. handle everybody on wheels. Oh, I mean, they go to a club that has ramps yeah, built everywhere. in. It's like Starlight Express style. Yeah. That like, was- it imagines a world that is not the future yeah. in which life exists like a, a, a Starlight Express and, and, and like there are hacker like raves. Hacker clubs. It's like- everybody, la- like hackers are the most secretive people. They are anonymous. Yes. But like in this movie, People like spray paint their front door like Hackstock, yeah, or, or whatever. Like it's like it's like picture what you know of Snowden, and then just go to yeah. the exact opposite. It I mean, is crazy. these are more like these. I said like everyone looks like they're an extra from the Point Break movie, the original. Yes. Uh, and the, the original, <laughs> the original, not the not way, the remake. I don't fuck all with that these new one. Hackers seem to want to do at least the teenage hackers is. Um, be able to make phone calls for free from pay phones. Like, that seems to be... I way, never understood what they're beyond, like, breaking up the crime that well, we they're find trying out about. To, yeah. What they want... They're what trying to hack the planet, obviously. Their ideology, though, in terms of hacking is. Like, it's not for the greater good. Well, like, literally... It's for, it's for free phone calls. Well, we... <laughs> no, uh, well, <laughs> Razor I think... What do they want to do? I think they want to... Cause chaos? Cause chaos and have their monikers be... Like, this is what hackers do. They hack something to show that they could get in, and then they leave something behind to show that they were that there, basically. Them. But That's what they're kind of talking about in that weird that's cafe. Terrible. When but they're like, I got into this bank, and I got it to do this, and boop, 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 you know? But sometimes they just want to, like, put on their favorite episodes of, like, uh, yes. The Outer Rim. Outer What's interesting about that is it just makes, to me, it just makes them so unlikable and unredeemable. Sure. Well, you know what, Jim? They're terrible people. um, And this movie posits them as, like, the good guys. They're not. Who are, like, who are breaking federal laws, like, almost like you would root for a movie uh, that was about kids doing graffiti. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, street kids doing graffiti. Well, they're, like— Even though they're breaking the law and damaging people's property, that's—there's an artistic merit. I feel like this posits the idea that the hackers are like that. Well, let's let's wow. hear let's hear what Fisher Stevens, oh. as his character, oh. thinks <laughs> hackers are. Let's take a listen. You wanted to know who I am, Zero Cool? Well, let me explain the New World Order. Governments and corporations need people like you and me. We are Samurai, the keyboard cowboys, and all those other people out there who have no idea what's going on are the cattle. Moo. I need your help. You need my help. Let me help you earn your spurs. Ah, think about it. Enjoy the laptop. (laughs) Cool. Tell me where the... So that is... Oh, my God. Wow. That is uh, Fisher Stevens describing, I guess, but basically not saying anything. Basically, I still don't understand from his point of view. Well, he's he seems he's just in it for the money, though. That's all he he's wants he's out of he's this. committing a huge crime by creating a worm that is siphoning money off of whatever that weird company is that he works for. Yes, uh, which is named Gibson, which is a tip of the hat to William Gibson, who invented the term cyberspace. Oh, that's true, yes. Uh, But, yeah, I didn't even really understand the premise of this movie. I want to get into the— So, it's a bunch of hackers, and there are these elite hackers. And the elite hackers— Is elite a word that hackers use? Because it's used a lot in the movie. They go, don't worry, he's an elite hacker. Yeah, he's elite. But meanwhile, there's a kid who's trying to get into the elite group, and they go, why don't you break into Gibson, which has not really been established at and all. And it's like a mining company or yeah. something. Yeah, no, why, no. Are, why are they like, oh, Gibson, you should hack Gibson. And Gibson, to me, seems like a very important giant company because they have multiple tankers out across the world that can easily be flooded. That's basically what's happening in this mm-hmm. movie, that tankers are going to flip over. But the budget of this movie never shows you any of those well, tankers I also doubt that these tankers, you know, one of the big points that Fisher makes is that these tankers don't have any manual, like, abilities yeah. anymore. Like, their yes. entire— and I just Which don't, is interesting. 
But that how could that be that there's no it's way a boat. To, you should have some you manual should have yeah. some, well this I mean, is the no this is the whole conversation that, that people are having right now about like these Google Drones. cars oh Google Google cars. cars all these or self-driving cars Tesla is now a self drive can, can be self all these self-driving cars should you be able to manually override it or not yeah mm. because we are more fallible by far than the machines like the only problem they've had with Google cars so much so far, rather, is that people driving keep hitting the driverless cars. <laughs> but, Jason, I think this comes back to an issue we've talked about a lot, which is do you fear machines or not? Do I'm you listening. trust them? Yeah. And well, people did. Hackers I did don't hack trust them. Jeep. They, oh, really? They hacked a moving car. Fuck. Oh, wow. Fuck that. They were able— <laughs> Fuck. They were able to take control of a car's computer system and take it over. Wait, and what did that what car happened? do? They, no, no, they did it to show they could oh, do it. I'm sorry. It. They didn't do it like remotely to somebody who was driving. Oh, okay. They did it to show, hey, th- this is a this is a, this a weakness. Is a Got it. This should be dealt with because we were very easily able to just hack so this car. So hackers like that are working in kind of an altruistic way where they're trying to blow whistles and show like yep. so so do they yeah, of course, but did they come forward and say they're just completely anonymous? They're not those ones, I'm not sure. I mean, the, group, the hacker higher. group Anonymous, well, yeah. they are like the, you know, they are, elite. The, they are the elite hackers. And, who they're, are, and they're probably gathering around watching Razor and Blade do their, oh, their yeah. hacker show. Oh, my God. I mean, that was, that was the thing that was so crazy about it is that this supposedly elite group of hackers yeah. get together to watch a TV show with these two characters, <laughs> Razor and Blade, who open up their show, which we don't even understand if it's a public access or if they're also hacking into a station. I don't know. Uh, to then basically uh, talk about how to get free phone calls. I yeah. mean, that Everything seems like a very low level. Calls. That's a low but level way, of hacking. That's a different, that's to me a storyline in this movie that in, in some ways wasn't exploited enough, which should have been that free phone these calls? are teen, well, well, these are teen <laughs> hackers. Yep. So what do teens really want out of their lives that Hand they jobs. can hack? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. And that's like kind of interesting to me, but to for them to just be hacking, hacking for the sake of it. But that is hacking. That is, I believe, and and I mean like the internet you can get in is there. to show that you are so good you could beat the security system of this big company or the government or whatever it is that is that you can show like oh I penetrated their defenses uh, that's how good I am I found a a back door it's, and a it's like winning I mean look better- any hackers out there. They're listening. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for our. Yeah, <laughs> our we're doing the best we can. But uh, it's like it's like winning a race. It's like having a medal. It's like I did that. I did that. It's like a co- it's accomplishment based. Yeah. It's like it's unlocking who did the what. Like if you brought down a. Company. And then of course that's I think that's the kind of hackers that are meant to be represented in this. I also think there are malicious hackers who are trying to steal credit card information, who are trying to steal information right. in order to make money off of it, in order to profit. Well, like yes, because I don't so think they're that, just doing it for the love I of think, the hack. I think these this movie is about kids who are doing it to show that they're good, to impress each other. Right. They're they're not. They're not evil. They're, I mean, at yeah. the most, they're messing around with TV stations. Yeah. Uh, but they're not doing like a oh, I would, a I would say that at, the, at the end when they made all those stoplights go haywire. Yeah. I mean, that seemed to be incredibly unsafe. True. People could have been hurt. Absolutely. <laughs> so it seemed people were. It kind of seems like you're on the side of the Secret Service. You don't, we want to shut these hackers down. Yeah. <laughs> of course. I thought you would also want to be a hacker, though, too. Because you Not would want it looks so tedious. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a terrible way to spend your day. Oh, I mean, it looks horrible. And can you imagine, especially back then? And yeah. I would love it if if people would tell us on the message boards or whatever. Like back then, everything moved so slow. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're connecting to payphones. Yes. Oh, by the way, the they're, they're they're looking connecting at a to modem payphones because payphones exist. <laughs> they're they're excited about a new modem, and yep. they're looking at a modem like whoa. And the modem is also eliminating, like, uh, uh, sorry, not eliminating, emanating a light <laughs> at you. Like everything in this movie is reversed projectored. Yeah, like there, if computers were shooting that much light oh, into yeah. your face, we'd all be blind by now. Like everybody's. <laughs> face is, a, is a, it only really the reflection. It really is. It's of- that thing where, where, where they get into trouble a lot repre- in, in movies that try and represent computers and yes. working at computers. You know, what's it called? Um, 
The Net is another oh, yes. one. Which I thought we should do after we, this. Yeah, we, yeah, I remember we should. enjoying The Net. Really? Yes. Oh, we got to watch that. Oh, we got to go I'd love that. to see it again. Let's do back to back. Things that, are, things that are truly dependent on the most mundane and boring activity, which is typing commands into a keyboard. And so this movie goes so out of its way to give us interesting visuals to go along with that, all of which is nonsense. I mean, he's literally in a plane looking down at New York City, and then New York City turns into a big microchip, and he's, like, looking at mm-hmm. all the connections. I feel like I spent the entire movie in the brains of a computer. Computer. Like just in the innards of a fucking computer. You're always in, oh, and that must have been horrible for you because you have such a firmly entrenched I, fear of I computers. I don't like computers or machines in general, and I felt oh, so. I this was, was a horror movie for of you. a machine the entire time. Really? Wow. Yes. You didn't identify with any of the human characters. <laughs> Honestly, not really. Really? At all. Like, so you wouldn't say that Serial or Nikon or Freak or The Plague or Razor or no, Blade? No. Well, first of all, I never understood why. Um, the two of them, Kate, Angelina Jolie, and Johnny Lee, what's Miller. his last name? Johnny Lee Miller. Even Who I, married I, after this. Which is interesting, but I didn't understand why they didn't like each other in the beginning. No, and I felt like Because they're rival hackers. She was also trying to program the TV station. So, but when she, he arrives at high school, did she know that? No. Why, why is no, she she's automatically just, angry with him? Oh, she's just she's, she's just, just that way. Yeah, she's but just that way. Couldn't you tell? But why why is the cool <laughs> girl? Couldn't you tell? She dresses like she's an extra in Logan's Run. I'm oh, ready to talk when, about her sideburns whenever wait, wait, anyone wait. else. When is. were rash guards as normal wear yeah. in? <laughs> why she's was wearing she a wearing fucking like, surfer shirt? Yes. Through a majority of this movie. She also at one point is wearing just like a one-piece futuristic jumpsuit. Yes, a lot inexplicably. Of and then, so like, as if she truly is like, oh, I'm going to start dressing like I'm from a super futuristic sci-fi movie and ride around on this motorcycle. But yet, she also is the person that the school is deemed to, to initiate the yeah. new students. Yeah. <laughs> like, that and why the were there so many new students that day? And all There's like, when she plays a prank on him, there's like a pool on the roof, and he goes up, and there's no pool on the roof. There's like 25 kids up there. <laughs> Are there 25 new students at this school? Well, also, by the way, I had an issue with that pool prank. Are... Is, is everybody that, like can't wait to get a look at that pool? I know, like, c- can high school kids can't resist <laughs> an, uh, the promise of an Olympic sized yeah. pool? Also, everybody, come on, there's no pool on the roof, right? <laughs> I mean, there should, is a pool uh, here at the Earwolf roof. Ooh, though. Should we should maybe stop ooh, the recording. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, it wasn't like, ooh, there's the a Earwolf girl. pool? Come on, you guys don't know about the Earwolf pool? Uh, no, is it, how long has it been there for? Oh, it, it just opened. Ooh, is it nice? Oh, there's like a, there's a, there's a lemonade <laughs> stand. All right, let's, have, let's go up there and take a break. We'll there's a, a break. bocce ball court. <laughs> oh, it's so great, the pool. The Earwolf pool, where all your money is going. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I knew it. Every, I knew that's what they were doing. <laughs> I gave them $100 for this show, and they're making a pool. <laughs> it's a really nice pool, though. You guys can come visit it anytime you're out here in L.A., suckers. Um, we're looking at you, England. <laughs> Screw you, dicks. England, uh, we apologize. Still, I'm still going to war with England, and we we have no bo- we have no dates on the book for London shows. I'm sorry that we <laughs> falsely promised that to you. <laughs> we would love to go to London. We, and will, we will come to London. We but will come to London. There are no so dates can, in the book, so you can you can yell at us uh, 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 in person rather than just online. Um, you bastards. <laughs> uh, and by the way. Let's, uh, Angelina Jolie, uh, is, they're all dressing, like these hackers are all dressing like hackers, like almost like clowns. Like the outfits yeah. in this movie, like Matthew Lillard's outfit. Uh, Matthew Lillard. Oh, those braids. Okay. Those so braids. I, yeah. Yeah, I, okay. <laughs> I, hold on. Let me you talk for one, one second. I yeah. just want to find what I wrote. Matthew I Lillard is doing something with this character that I can't figure out. I think he's adopting a slight, uh, transgender motif I think he's also adopting uh, like a stoner motif it's too it's like a jacket on a jacket on a jacket there's but so you have okay. to remember he, the early 90s the <laughs> style was disgusting yes like, it, this is New York City like this is pe- I kept forgetting it was New York City by New the way New York City it's like these <laughs> really? and, yeah, and it's with high school kids like they should be at the cutting edge of what's going on and I think they were and it's disgusting he Matthew Lillard I wrote down it in the middle of the movie Matthew Lillard is I believe basing his entire character's look on Rayanne from My So-Called Life. (laughs) (laughs) 
He is dressed identical to the female best friend in my so-called life, 100%. The braids, the, the outfits, every, he's wearing, I believe he's wearing women's clothing the whole time. Oh. And and it is fascinating everything he's doing. Well, and I don't. He know was by far my favorite character in the movie. Yeah, he was amazing. by far. He definitely made a choice, and he was fun. Yep. I don't understand. Loved what? Him. Like I don't understand if he was homeless. I don't understand. He it references make, not having a place to sleep a few times. It doesn't yes. make sense that he's a hacker. He no. seems like their dumb buddy, but is instead just another hacker with them. And he seems like on their level. Yeah, he's elite. Um, <laughs> the, the one thing I wanted to bring up about his wardrobe, too, is that he is wearing a shirt, and uh, Avril actually brought this up, too. His shirt is of a young girl holding Jesus's hand, <laughs> and, and it says, and the, the young girl is saying, what happened to your hand? Because there is a nail mark yeah. in the hand. That is the shirt that he wears in the AP English class. What's well, interesting, g- though, because <laughs> the 90s to shirt. me, the early 90s, was all about, like, it was not about looking good. No. No. It was about, like, men dyeing their hair that horrible shade of blonde. Yep. And, like, or red or, or red. whatever. Yeah, like Claire Danes and my – I mean, I thought she was beautiful, but, mm-hmm. like, it's not – it's – it's not great, no. that color. It's also a movie ver- a movie version of these things. Because I also, yesterday, after I watched this, I watched a bunch of High Fidelity. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is great. wonderful. Yeah. Great but th- it also has the gang of skateboard kids who hang out out, mm-hmm. out front of the record shop are similarly dressed in 90s era. Crazy terrible. clothes, crazy weird hair colors but was that it are weird? so beyond what kids did at that point. It's almost you know? like the – same person who cast everybody in Back to the Future 2 when they're in the future yep. did all the art design for everything. It's like they're, it's, people are tr- so trying to pick a trend oh, and yeah. they just – like again, like a rash guard <laughs> is, a, is a bold <laughs> move. It's a bold move. and uh, Especially for someone – it's not like it's a California movie yeah. where she's yeah. wearing surf clothes to school. Yeah. It's a New York City movie where she's wearing like a Quicksilver rash guard shirt to school. <laughs> yeah. I don't know uh, what's and, going okay, on. It's a rash guard. It's it's bright blue. And then she seems to be wearing like – This is Angelina Jolie, by the way. That are yes. high-waisted over yep. it. Yep. Yes. But like evening wear and then like a nice like a nice ankle boot. And when it's she like yeah. baffling. Yes. <laughs> it's oh, baffling. No. It is like a combination of high end sportswear, <laughs> high end couture. Like slacks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I got, <laughs> I'm going shopping at the surf shop. I'm going shopping at like Bloomingdale's. And yeah, then I'm like. Stop off at Ann Taylor. And then, I, and then my doesn't... friend is going to like, do, like throw scissors around my head. And that's what my haircut's going to be. <laughs> she, and, and what I found even interesting was that her fashion sense went into her dreamscape. Yes. Because when she dreams about Johnny Lee Miller, am I right or wrong? Is he wearing like a fully plastic or yes, like a, a leather, 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 yeah, bodysuit. Like a yes. Eddie Murphy from yes. Delirious bodysuit. Like, so her fantasy of him is in this well, leather. Well, but that was an interesting moment, that fantasy, because – I thought, because at first there's a shot of a woman, it's clearly a woman in like that red leather spandex, latex, whatever that is, the jumpsuit, like a bodysuit. Yeah. Yep. And there's a finger like, you know, going around her thighs and then they pan up and it's him wearing it. Yes. Well, there's definitely What's like- going on? There's a bunch of like That's gender fluidity going yes. on. Also, you know, not just Matthew Lillard's wardrobe, which again is all based on Rayanne from <laughs> My So-Called Life, but also like Johnny Lee Miller and Angelina Jolie have the bet about whoever loses, whoever's not the best hacker has to wear a dress on yes. their date. And then he is, when they have their date at the end of the movie, wearing something that is in between- uh, Everyone's what? wearing something in between. I feel like I feel and like the men are dyeing their hair. I feel like that was it. They feel like the guy, people who made the movie were like, uh, uh, boys are girls, uh, girls yeah. are boys, uh, gender mix up. Ooh, They're hackers. Who knows? Hackers. They hack the. They hack their sexuality. Yeah. Like like. <laughs> they, June, yeah. can you talk about and your? Then, and yeah, go ahead. Uh, well, one of June's most. I, I, it was fun to watch your reaction to it. I don't know if you want to bring it back to your memory, but what Matthew Lillard did to himself. When he licked his own nipple, or yeah. t- he didn't lick it, he just touched it, yeah. like, oh, sexually. Yeah. I was, I was really upset. It you was, were. It was upset. disturbing to oh. me too. Were you more upset oh. by that oh. act of sexuality, oh. 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 or the fact that Fisher Stevens and Lorraine Bracco were involved? <laughs> <laughs> I 
I've never seen two bodies not want not, to come together. Not make more. any like two sense. Two magnets, two magnets <laughs> pushing, pushing each other. They did not line up right at all. I know. Like when they approached, <sighs> it took me so long to realize they were meant to be love interests that when they finally made it so explicit, I was like, oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. We can't do this. And Please don't. This doesn't work at all. <laughs> I have to say, like, I like Lorraine Bracco. There is something, though, in her voice that. Computer jargon in her voice is not, it, yeah. does, it does not work. It just so does much not so sync. that her lines became like uh, commenting on that. She was like, hard drive, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. What are we talking about Cancer. here? Uh, yeah, listen, listen to, uh, the, this is a montage at the end when they're trying to explain to Lorraine Bracco how the guys are getting in. And this is the most techno babble. It's great. Just take a listen. There's a new virus in the database. What's happening? Replicating, eating up memory. Uh, what do I do? Type cookie, you idiot. Like a Pac-Man. I'll head him off at the pass. You have a zero bug attacking all login and all the way file. Run antivirus. Give me a systems display. Die, dickweeds. It's like it's a video game. Rabbit yeah. It is in the administration system. Send a flu shot. Rabbit, flu shot, someone talk to me. A rabbit uh, replicates till it overloads someone the file. Someone talk to me. Like cancer. <laughs> cancer? Cancer? This uh, Here, hold one more second. Multiple GPI and FSI virus. Who's gonna have a remote node? So go on for the kernel. Kernel who? The system command processor. It's the brain. Cancer, brain, brain, cancer. Belf, what's going on? In short, Duke, a shit <laughs> Okay, great. <laughs> I mean, poor Penn Jillette, who is... In this movie, as like Fisher Stevens is like right hand man well, in the literally, computer room. Literally, if we can break down Pendulet's role, he is a security guard in the computer, like yeah. of the computer. computer. Like it would be as if you put someone inside yes. your computer, and then Fisher Stevens goes inside the computer with him, and the whole all of it. All of the computer, this is the, what we just listened to, was the scene where all the hackers are attacking Fisher Stevens' company. Yes. The Gibson company, company there, inundating them with viruses. And all it is, it sounds like, is video games. Oh, and, and they it's literally. Like, I'll head him off at the pass? What do you mean, I'll pass. head him off at the pass? And they literally have this a Pac Man icon yes. eating code, like, wrong, wrong, wrong. And a rabbit jumping yeah. around. It is gobbledygook <laughs> nonsense. And it also combines a lot of different things. It's like, in this world, hack. Hackers are gamers, and gamers and hackers are skateboarders yep. slash rollerbladers. Yep. Like, it's like, it's slash every- Slash motorcyclists. Yes. It's like, everything is all in one package. It's yep. like, and it's kind of what, I mean, I guess what they do in Furious, in the Fast and Furious movies, they just don't do it as aggressively. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Like they're all I mean, like, ludicrous in those movies and the woman in the most recent one, uh, uh, miss, uh, the woman from Game, Game of Thrones, yeah. they are able to effortlessly access anything from like an old Motorola Razor phone. They can be like, I'm in the NSA immediately. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's crazy. Well, uh, this is just like that, only much stupider looking. I have a question for you guys. The movie opens up with a, uh, a slow-mo montage of SWAT Coming in. By the way, anytime in this movie anyone's hacking, SWAT yeah. descends guns, to, like guns multiple, on children, yep. multiple guns on children. And if they did any research, especially for the Johnny Lee Miller character, that kid was eight years old or eleven years old. Like he didn't need to come in with a full complement of SWAT team. Nor did he need like a federal trial. I mean, yeah, a minor. Nor did I need to see his butt when he gets arrested. Oh yeah, when he <laughs> fell. There's down. like a bunch of little boy butt in this movie that I did not. I was like, what is going on? Oh, we see Matthew Lillard's butt. We see we this do. kid Joey yeah. or Johnny's butt. Like wh- I was like, why? Why, why are we looking at this kid? I want to talk the kid about- who oftentimes is smoking two cigarettes at once. <laughs> I was like, this. This kid's story is bonkers. I did well, love Joey- the actress who played his mom. Oh, yes, she, great. She was great. just on All fire. right, you're not fire. grounded. <laughs> Joey was great. Joey was amazing because Joey um, was wearing, and I don't know if you caught this. I caught it only on rewatching it. Headphones in the shower oh, that had yes, Ziploc yeah. bags, on. bags on them, of yeah. course. So he could like sing his song. Yep. Like, not the idea of like just playing a radio in there. Nope. He had to be wearing his headphones yes, in the shower. Because that's what kids did. They wore their Walkman. 
Everywhere. And I also say I also thought that Johnny Lee, Lee Miller gets too soapy in the shower. Yeah. When they cut to him in the shower, so, his so body bad. was almost covered in soap. And he had so- just gotten in the shower. <laughs> he lathers yeah. quick. He lathered up quick. <laughs> I love when Joey is, uh, uh, in, after he's busted and he's put in the apartment, and they're, the police are staking out his place, the guy goes, it's all ADR. There's so much terrible ADR in this movie. But you hear the agent's voice go, uh, suspect is still inside. Uh, suspect is still grounded by his mother. Like, yeah, who like, else grounds people, asshole? And he's like what fourteen. Do you mean? The he's FBI a- didn't ground him. You fucking dick. Well, sometimes by his mother. The like the condescension in his voice is amazing. But also, I would argue that in this movie, uh, this the penalties are kind of ridiculous. When uh, Johnny Lee Miller does his whole thing about how he cr- crashed 1,507 systems, what does that even mean? Yep. Uh, his mo- he's, his, he can't use a touchstone phone or a computer until he's 18, which is a crazy, like, how do you enforce that can't penalty? Can't use a touchstone phone. You can't use a touchstone phone or What do you or think com- happened between his mom and dad? Uh, I was really curious about that, too. I don't know. Because it seemed like, you know, that opening shot of the SWAT team arriving at their house and you like they sort of turn around the corner of the house and you see her. I did. I did love that. And then the dad seemed to be very present at the trial. Well, look, and they, then they head off to Grimsville, New York City in this like one bedroom apartment oh, yeah. where she's sleeping well, on the couch. Well, remember they reconcile for a little while. They split up, then they get back together. Well, we only know that through. I know. Yeah, I know. We don't, I know. Ex- we don't well, know what why. Happened? What I mean, happened? What happened? To add that detail that like they had a moment of. Oh, yeah. Getting back. I mean, do you think that this kid broke them apart? Did Dade slash Zero Cool break them apart? Well, I think what we do know is that all divorces are the kid's fault. Yeah. I mean, I think that's true no matter what you're talking about. If people split up, it's because of the kids. Well, of course, because it's and like he's an only child, put a so pressure it's on sure the marriage. They put a pressure on the marriage. Amen. They, they, they do. Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. Oh, Amen. Amen. Wait, just you just wait, Chase. Why are you guys giving you each other? The just finger? wait. Why are you guys just, just giving wait. each other the finger? Amen. What's going on? <laughs> um, the thing that was so <laughs> the thing that was so confusing to me in this movie was I thought for sure like they repeat. Uh, Johnny Lee Miller's backstory a million times. Like, not only does the movie open with his backstory, uh, they keep on telling you that he crashed these systems. And at a certain point, when they're calling him an elite hacker, because I guess he knew how to identify different workbooks. Uh, yeah, that like, seems that's the red book. That, yeah, what? That's, yeah. I mean, it's a book well, of the red book. Well, he changed co- his English class in school. I mean, that's it. Oh, yeah. They were impressed with that. He was able to hack into the AP English class, which also Matthew Lillard hacked, or he didn't hack into. He just showed up in the AP class <laughs> for no he reason. Why did he show up to write something on the blackboard and then be like, oh, guess I'm out of here. Like, oh, that hacker. There were so many strange details, though. Like Angelina Jolie's mom being a self-help guru yes. and writing these books. Books. Like I mean, that's never called bad. I mean, there's just there's some a, details in this movie that are baffling. Well, there's some funny moments too because that that idea, like they're all writing quotes from literature on the board. Yep. And like you know, Matthew Lillard writes like, "Of all the things I lost, I miss my mind the most." And then it's Ozzy know, Osbourne. Uh, Ozzy Osbourne. And then um, Johnny Lee Miller is writing a quote about. Uh, oh, it was a good like a, a good quote. Ginsburg. Ginsburg, right? And then and then Angelina Jolie's like. The only reason why they gave uh, men bigger brains than dogs is so they wouldn't hump your leg at parties. Cocktail parties. At cocktail parties. And then they're like, who wrote that? She's like, my mother. And he goes, well, we're looking for somebody who is actually a contemporary <laughs> of, this, uh, of this age. And she goes, she, her last book sold two million copies. And it's like – that's like a great, like, all, yeah. right, well, all right, so what are... What are we doing here? What are we doing? What, what are we doing? <laughs> it's, all, it's all great stuff. It's just what are... But these, like, comebacks what's... and, like, in the same thing when they call the plague Eugene, she's like, okay, Eugene, goes, I'm the plague, and then rips a piece of paper in half. <laughs> like, <if> people, <laughs> yeah. people are, like, very uh, I feel like I, defensive. I feel like this movie is, like, um, if you told me somebody... If you told me an alien wrote this movie, thinking it would be like, oh, this is what Earth teens yeah. are like, or 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 if you told me like at this era, like the Cold War era, like the Russians wrote this movie, like that would this, make sense. It yeah. feels like someone else's idea of what this of what youth culture was then. You yes. know what I mean? It does not feel like it's at all in touch with anything real. The way that like John Hughes, I was going to say John were, Hughes, like, or the way that it. other teen movies get it. This feels like very tone deaf 
to both hacking, yeah. which is it's startlingly tone deaf. Uh, but Are you especially, a hacker? How do you don't know worry that? about it. <laughs> Were you at Hackstock? Uh, but Nikon? then especially like teen stuff, it doesn't make sense at oh, all. Oh no, it doesn't yeah. feel like there's anything. Um, because I, again, the the story about him and his mom is sort of interesting and feeling like you know he's yep. been displaced because of her and had to restart it's his life. Like it's got like the Karate up. Kid opening. Yeah, it, like it the, has yeah. the sort the structure of that, but then. And, and she's also used as a threat at one point, but then it's just never really resolved. I also don't get that Angelina Jolie and him are, like, they don't, it's like it's there because it has to be there, but yeah. you don't feel like it's really there. There's it, no real chemistry between them. No. Um, how about the scene where he has computer disks tucked into his belt oh, like I just a gun? Them down. Oh, I like a it. gun, like a, like a guy, like a gangster who's got a gun tucked in his belt, <laughs> and he's taking, he's like, Pulling it out like quick draw style, yes. as if he's going to be called upon. Flip, yeah, as if he's going to be called upon to have like a, a, a showdown, a gunfight at the OK Corral with computer disc, <laughs> and the first, the the fastest draw of pulling a computer disc out of your belt is going to win. What that, the fuck is going on? That blew my mind. I was like, this is not important, and it goes up to my next thing. Which can we all agree? All of us. Out there listening, all of us in here, that never again do we ever need to say on film or in movies, are you talking to me? Yeah. Like, I think, like, when he did that thing, are you talking to me? Yeah. Like, what, what is, like, he's doing, like, he's doing the Robert De Niro scene. I feel like I've yep. seen that Robert De Niro scene so many times. And for him to pull out a disc and say, you talking to uh. me? Really upset. Really, I don't a real see, bummer. I don't want to see. I mean, it. I, I, I don't know if I want to say I never want to see it again. Really? Yeah, if it's interpreted well, I mean, I'm open <laughs> to it. Here's the scene I want to talk about. When Fisher Stevens is, when everything's going down, where he's waging war, which, by the way, like, what, I, I don't know what's happening, like, how viruses are attacking other viruses, and I have no idea what's going on. But at one point, he pulls out a scallion or a... What? He pulls out a long green snack and starts eating it. Oh, yeah. I remember I, what I, he eats. What he, is that? He's definitely eating a candy bar in one scene. No, it's not the candy bar. You guys. Uh, you I know. I remember what you mean. Lo- it looks like a vegetable, it looks but it's like, brighter right. green than that. I feel like it's like a long piece of taffy or candy. or Because he's eating candy throughout the yeah, movie. It probably is Like taffy. hackers do. Or maybe it's a Jolly Rancher. It's because lo- like, it's it looks long. like an asparagus. It's so okay, long. it looks like, it looks like a, they asparagus. used to make big Jolly Ranchers though, like long, thick Jolly Ranchers. Remember really? that? Yeah, like what they were you like t- like that they're almost delicious. like they were like they were like. Uh, what are you talking about? No, they were like a uh, candy bar, but even bigger really? size. They were just flat. Oh, I do remember, like, but yeah. they weren't that big where your hands are. All right, they oh, were this big. Yeah, yeah, I and remember. You could peel it back. It was like a score bar. Yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. Does the score bar still exist? I'm sure I haven't been remember really that? to a candy place. I like I, I used to love. Remember, can, remember going to the candy store? Oh my Loved gosh! It. I got oh. myself a Symphony bar. I like the Symphony bar. Really? Yeah, I like oh, the Symphony interesting. bar. Interesting. But I mean, yeah, I, I used to get a what you call it? Oh, what you call it? Or a, yeah. a one hundred thousand dollar bar. Those are my two favorites. Before too? it was called a hundred grand. Yeah. No thanks. I would get one of those magic tape dispensers, which was just oh, bubble yeah. gum, and yep, I would yep. pretty much put the entire thing in my mouth and chew it. <laughs> which is still your problem to this day. You do not I take know, more. Chew way too much gum. Yeah. At the same time. At the same I must time. have, it used to be I could, I, I would rather have no pieces of gum than just one. Really? Yes. Yeah. Because one piece of to, gum to it's you not is, enough. It's, it's not enough child's gum. Play. <laughs> it's so you're an child's elite play. gum chewer, would you say? <laughs> and then I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to always need two. And then I crossed the threshold and now I must have three if I'm going to have any. So I have to wow. buy her wow. those like tubs yep. of uh, gum, gum. Tubs. Yeah, like they're like they're those giant ones. They're like 150. Just, you guys pieces. go to Costco just for gum. <laughs> and I, I, and I, I don't I swear, chew gum all the time, but if I'm going to, but I. But by the way, you will power through. Like I was amazed that you powered through the 150 pieces of gum. Yeah. In how long? A week. Yeah. I would, yeah. A month, maybe a month. 150 pieces in a month. And is it sugar free? A week. What are wow. we talking about? If I here? know it's in the car, I'm gonna. Power through all. How, of okay, it. I have a question. How long do you chew those three good, yeah. pieces of gum right for? Right until the flavor's over, and which then I is start how long? Again. Uh, like five minutes. I was gonna say, is it? It's I don't. Not very long. I oh am, wow, you really get it. Uh, I am the opposite. I do not chew gum I'm with you. Oh, ever. I think it's gross. Why not? To chew gum. Uh, I don't. Uh, a, I think it's gross, and B, uh, it makes me hungry. 
Yeah, it makes me oh, hungry too. It does the opposite. People oftentimes are like, oh, I chew gum. It, it, it quenches my appetite or whatever. I don't chew gum because the minute I do, it's like Pavlovian, like, me oh, too. the mastication uh, right. motion makes me feel like I must be eating now. And I get kind of hungry. And then it's like, oh, no, you're not eating at all. Oh, interesting. You're just having a yeah. dumb dumb piece of gum, you asshole. I think I, for me, it's it's about... I don't smoke anymore, but I miss that experience, that sure. ritual, and the sort of oral fixation of smoking. Right. And now that that's gone, it feels like it's something that I can do that's yep. safe for me. Well, you should start like just really hardcore vaping. <laughs> yeah, you just look really so cool. hardcore you e cigarettes. Look like so sexy with a nice vape pen yeah, out just there, like puffing away on your vape pen just with those blueberry vape never. smoke Giant coming clouds out. Clouds of ridiculous smoke. So could I vape right here? Yes, I believe you could. <sighs> that's crazy. It would be insane if you did. Oh, just <laughs> By the way, I would like it if you oh really God. adopted a vape lifestyle. Yep. Like a real, like, and it's not like you're not putting marijuana in there. You're just no, putting. No, just straight, straight like yeah. tobacco or whatever they are, whatever the. The flavored e, ones. E, yeah. e tobaccos are or whatever. And the, yeah, and you were just like a hardcore vapor with it like on your belt. <laughs> I do. I appreciate. Sometimes I'll see people with a pretty intense vape pen. Like, uh, oh yeah, like it's. It it's looks like, like a, a lightsaber. Uh, yeah, uh, 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 handle. But sometimes, like coming out of, like, have you ever seen the vape pens that are like? They look like an iPad or no, an, uh, an iPod, and they have like a <laughs> yes, stick out totally. of it too. Yeah, that's another one. It's like it's very like you yeah. gotta start vaping, wow. June. June. Vape. I've June. never tried vape. it. I, vape, vape. I would be open to trying it. Really? Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, of course. It's healthy for you, right? It's not. It's, it is actually not, healthy. No, it's not. It's healthy for you. <laughs> it is like taking vitamins. Healthy. Vaping is like vitamins. It's That's why they call healthy. it vape. I'm definitely gonna do it. The <laughs> V is for vitamins. <laughs> uh, you know what you should do? Because I'm, you know, a lot of women that I know now are doing prenatal vape. Oh yeah, you know, those are just great. Yes, the prenatal vape. Just uh, get used to a dead body. Yeah, their gotta, hair looks great. You gotta get it. that vape, and it's got hair all nails. the. Yep. Yeah, their wrong. skin looks yep. really good for the baby. Also, and and after babies too, there's a lot of placenta vaping going on. <laughs> they oh, just yeah. grind that placenta <laughs> down into a vapeable to, substance, yeah. and, and you, you just vape, vape that scent, bro. <laughs> gotta vape that scent. And by, by the way, they can get that on the black market. It is expensive. get it on the dark web, hackers. <laughs> uh, um, did you guys notice? <laughs> I love that we have ground this talk to an absolute halt to discuss candy bars, gum, and vaping. <laughs> Snacking with the How Did This Get Made crew. Oh, yeah. I love um, that segment. Did you guys remember, or did you guys notice the character that was in another How Did This Get Made movie? Hmm. Um, it's the same exact character. Um, if you haven't noticed it, maybe you just didn't catch it. It was uh, the robot that holds a gun from Runaway was also oh in this movie. Oh, my God. Another robotic <laughs> arm another, holding a gun. Another what? robot with I'm a handgun. I'm glad that gun. guy's getting work. <laughs> you know? yeah. By the way, what is Angelina Jolie shooting when she shoots at... Oh, it's like the, a, 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 a it's a, a flare gun. Flare gun, but oh. that seems to me more violent than a gun. No. If you shot a flare gun at close range, oh, yeah. Yeah. that He's guy is ten feet away, and yeah. he is lit on fire. No, that is like what she did would literally be like I believe a federal offense. Oh, like huge. shooting a, a flare gun at people. A person. Yeah, no, I'm 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 certain <laughs> ten feet that away. Is. But it was so cool. Oh, man. She's the best. Um, I was going to say, this is the most conspicuous group in Chinatown. Like, when yeah. they're around the phones doing stuff, they are, like, they're trying to, like, like Matthew Lillard's, like, looking out. The other guy's, like, looking out the corner. They are literally, like, you would look at them and go, hey, what the fuck is going on yeah. over here? Something's they are there. not... They are not smooth. They are no, not But I feel like subtle. the movie is like positing this idea that like, oh, gr that's what gr the world is. Groups of hackers clustered around public phones just hacking the planet, man. Uh, and I love Wendell Pierce in this movie from The Wire. Bunk. Bunk from The Wire. He's so great. When he gets – he did something that made me laugh when they kind of like focused their hacking attention. And I thought that actually was the best use of hacking in yes. this movie. Yeah, like interesting. They did like a whole thing where they kind of wreck his life and they uh, they make him look like he has a, a little excessive 137 <laughs> driving violations and a DUI, which I thought just seemed a oh, little yeah. bit ridiculous. They also made him um, register for a sex hotline. And they and they cut his um, credit card. Oh right! They, they turned off his credit card so much so that the waiter came to the table and cut it with scissors in front of him. Now, so isn't defiantly. That a thing that used to happen though. Yes, I thought about that too. Like they I used remember, to cut your credit card. I believe card. I saw my mother's credit card cut in front of her. That really? was a, that was a thing. Yeah. They used to tell you to cut the credit card. Now I think they have better systems to be like. Yeah. yeah. 
But yeah, they they cut it. Oh boy! That's but I was gonna crazy. say my favorite moment with him was when the sex line. There, he's getting all these phone numbers calling him like, "Oh, I want to fuck you. I want to oh, suck yeah. your feet. I want to, you know, come on your balls." Like he Wait, goes, "Did somebody say I want to come on your balls?" Yeah, it's in there. It's in there. It's just low. I want the stuff that comes out of my balls to on land your on balls. your balls. That's my, <laughs> that's my new shirt. I want to come on your balls, balls to balls. <laughs> so he. Um, he literally like picks up the phone, and he's like, like, and he and he wipes his hand off yep. as if the handle is dirty. But, see that I get because like if there if I ever am on a phone call with someone who's sick, it makes no, me feel crazy. it makes Which me feel like have I have just been exposed to that illness. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like oh, crazy. I feel it, oh, it's, a, so, it's such craziness. You have an issue. Uh, oh, absolutely. Don't worry. I'm talking about in therapy, guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, my, uh, this happens in movies a lot where someone's getting a gazillion phone calls and they frantically try to answer all of them on yes. that phone. <laughs> yes, all the phone I lights have to are blinking. Imagine that if I was getting that many calls on a phone like that, I'd just pull out the plug. Like something's happening. There's yep. no way to handle this. I want to say again that the character. That is Johnny, Joey. Yes. The kid who yes. yeah. is repeatedly smoking cigarettes in both in both hands. <laughs> One in, be, in, in between in both hands, like this. As if like that I, I was trying to figure that one out. And then he's in the addict meeting and he's like, I'm I'm not an addict. I, I, yeah, he's I'm not, not an addict. I'm not an addict. And they're all like, boo. And he's, and it's the point is like, he's smoking a cigarette and drinking, chugging coffee. And he's like, I'm not an addict. I'm going to go get more, more coffee. He's like, the, the, all they're doing is showing that he's constantly addicted to things. It is so stupid. And I could not figure it out. And then the other guy who has a photographic memory. Well, first oh, of all, I yeah. didn't like him repeating that woman's address oh, you and didn't, all of that. You didn't, think, you didn't think that was totally normal that the girl who that doesn't know really how he knows creepy. her name, he knows everything about her photographically? But he seemed to be offering that information like, hey, guys. Yeah, yeah. This is where she lives and what time she's going to be home at night. <laughs> well, uh, again, the other thing I want to – there's a couple things we're talking about. we get to second opinions in a second, but the uh, – I wanted to talk about the passwords that they say are the most oh, yeah. common passwords. Love. Yes. Sex. Secret. God. God. Those are, ne- were those nope. ever? No. Nope. The most common passwords are like one, one two, two, three, three four, four yeah. zero, 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 zero. The word password. Really? Uh, yeah. Like those, are, none of these are the most common passwords. What? No. What are you talking about? The, the most common secret. password is secret? <laughs> what? No, it's <laughs> not. What? Fuck you, assholes. Uh, that was that was super lame. And then I didn't understand when Johnny Lee Miller walked around and he was seeing old clips of movies, oh, like yes. Dream On. Yep. Like, that's not a hacker thing. That's the other thing. Like, when he's hacking and he's hacking and he's hacking and, and then he, like, and he gets, he closes his eyes and it's, like, quick cuts through, like, yes, old movies and TV shows as if that's what's going yeah. on like in the Dream mind on. of a hacker. And it wasn't well, there all the Well, yeah. Dream On, though, is also, by the way, a reference that 90% no, of No, no these, one gets this, the, yeah. The, 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 yeah. The, the, the people watching or uh, listening to this podcast are going to get, but it is like like channel surfing old TV. But I did is what they're imagine, saying is a hacker's though, brain. Well, I wonder if something does happen to their brains. I mean, they're spending their entire days looking at these numbers and data and but, all of that. Uh, yes, but I can't imagine what they screen. see when they close their eyes. Is like a clip from His Girl Friday. A clip yeah, from exactly. The, all you know, I'm like, saying <laughs> is some, their brains might be different. Well, I, I would say I would say like a nine. Their be. brains, June. You're right. Their brains might be different. <laughs> They're just hacked into they the old I mean, 1950s there's things, films. There's things that have happened to our royalty brains free after films. staring at screens for so long. Things happen to our brains. Well, June, I really like <laughs> your your anim, not animosity, but your legitimate fears of technology are, are compelling. June, tell tell it's Jason true. tell I mean, Jason what happened happen when I brought home BB-8. Oh, you brought home BB-8, the I, robot? The b- robot from Star Wars. I, I got the little well, remote first control. First I didn't know what the fuck it was. You just brought it home. It you didn't arrived. know what it was, but you say that in a way that is like, even to look at it, you wouldn't conceptually understand what it was fundamentally. I, I hoped that it was some As if sort he brought home Gizmo, figurine. the gremlin. <laughs> All I know is he placed it on a floor and it started roaming about, uh-huh. and I didn't like it. You, didn't you like said it. to I me, like what it. was the first question you I asked? I don't remember. What's its mission? <laughs> <laughs> What's its mission? What? <laughs> What's its mission? What is it here for? Oh my god, what's its mission? Did 
you, Paul? Did you go to the the book to be like, oh boy, let me look at this? No, I did the worst thing, which is like, don't you worry about it. It will monitor our house. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I It's just here to take pictures. <laughs> oh my What's god. The, I think I have a healthy skepticism. And then you told me immediately as I as I as I took it off the floor, what did you say to me? I don't remember. You said, get that the fuck out of here, I'm gonna throw it in the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> and it is now hidden from June. BBA cannot be out in public. Oh with my June. god, I love that. Let me hit you guys with what is some, its mission? Let is me hit you crazy uh, with <laughs> some <laughs> truth here about the movie. Some Go. things that you may not have known about the movie. Catherine Heigl was offered the Angelina Jolie role. She had to unfortunately turn it down due to Under Siege Two: Dark Territory. Oh wow! So that was interesting. Could have been a. Uh, I didn't realize she was. Working that much at that point. Other actresses that were up for the part, Hilary Swank, Heather Graham, and Liv Tyler. Well, Liv uh, Tyler so would have been interesting. Ed Norton was supposed to be the main, the main lead. Oh, I like at that. At one point. Now, here's the interesting thing that is uh, kind of great. The screenplay was written by Ralph Moreau, who is highly inspired by hacker and cyberpunk subcultures. Like, he went hmm. deep and he was interested now, in hacking. Doc- he was doc- is he Dr. Moreau's son? That's what I think. <laughs> no, he. <laughs> but this is his. Uh, he uh, he basically did a. He went to a meeting, went to hacker conventions. So maybe at this point, this is what the culture of hacking was like. I don't believe I don't it think to so. be true. I think probably he. I bet he wrote something that was more more subtle, and people were like, "We have to be." incredibly explicit. explicit with this because people are not going to understand. Yeah, I guess That's so. That's what I, I think the director made choices. I mean, like oftentimes what they, ex- what they show in hacking is like as if a helicopter is flying through skyscrapers yeah. made of right. math equations over shredding guitar. <laughs> You know, like, like, like flying through buildings made of motherboards while it's like, (laughs) what may have been true though, is they may, hackers may have been more communal in like 1995 than they are now. Right. There were, there was definitely a hacker convention. Here's the little final piece of truth. And you can read more, you can hear more about the film. You can hear everything about it uh, from Blake Harris's article on Slash Film. Go check it out. It is out today. It's a, a great read about this movie. He got the director, everybody involved to talk about this film, which just celebrated 20 years of uh, anniversary. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Uh, So here's the thing. MGM UA set up a website for hackers that was then immediately hacked by hackers. I love it. So uh, the Internet Liberation Front hacked it. And on the front page was a photograph of Angelina Jolie and Johnny Lee Miller. And, uh, and, And then the words were, this is going to be an interesting, fun promotional site for a movie. That was what was on it, which was kind of meta. And then it was replaced with, this is going to be a lame, cheesy promotional site for a movie. And that's what, that's what the hackers that's did. That's awesome. This, this movie is going to be lame. So that's, I think, the level of hacking back then. Like, just putting up, like, this is lame. Like, I feel like that's it. They weren't having, like, fully animated, uh, like, cartoon discussions back and forth between hackers, as this movie posits. Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't think it was, and I also don't think, like, what they were doing when they were hacking was what is represented in this, I mean, yeah. in, in terms of, like, making rabbits jump along and eat code or whatever, Pac-Man yeah. invading, yeah. blah, none of that stuff, but I do think, like, they were doing the kind of attacks that they are talking about in the movie, like, you know, taking, trying to get hold of banks, yes. trying to shut down security systems, trying to find back doors into blah, well, blah, blah. Well, I all guess what I'm saying is I feel like worms the majority. Worms and viruses, I think, were very prevalent. Yes. Oh, we then, didn't talk about the Da Vinci virus. Oh, we, oh, isn't that amazing? We didn't talk about the Da Vinci virus. The Da Vinci virus, which is like basically like the surfer dude, like who is oh, the Da Vinci virus, was literally Leonardo Da Vinci. But not, but they kept on going, that's Da Vinci. But Da Vinci's drawing of man Right, that image of like the multi-armed, yeah. multi-legged guy. That's not Da Vinci. Of that's not a self-portrait, is it? Um, I don't know. Oh, we, it, we're gonna have you know if ooh, if we're gonna figure this out, we're gonna have to go to Hudson Hawk. Oh yeah, we gotta get. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna get back to you. We're gonna revisit Hudson Hawk. <laughs> uh, well, but this is gonna be another one of those things where people freak out that we don't, don't know, know something that everybody's like, this is universal knowledge. Oh, I got slammed because someone wrote in on the podcast last week that. Any uh, that Super Nintendo made a video game of Life Force, and I mef- referenced that on the mini episode, and that's not true. It has nothing to do with Life Force, and my inbox. It's just been, a game called Life Force. Uh, yes, 
to have been full. How could you make that kind of mistake? I don't know. I trust. Uh, I trust our listeners. Paul, yeah. What I don't understand is. Are you, a? How are you so stupid to not know that offhand? I, I know. And B. Are you not doing all of the research necessary to record uh, all of this information? Look, I'm going to tell you one thing that uh, some guy wrote me on Twitter and goes, "Let me just tell you, oh, your boy. knowledge of NES is lame." Awesome. And I was like, "Thank you. I'm thank you. Quite it is. comfortable. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm producing it this is. free. I'm I, producing this free podcast for yeah, you. Yeah. Uh, and also, I'm comfortable with my knowledge of NES being lame. Like in the grand scheme of things, I'm not, I'm fine with it. Um, okay. <laughs> Obviously, we had an opinion about this movie, but there are other people out there that had a different opinion. It is now time for second opinions. Second opinions. Second opinions. Now that was from Michael Ficus, who I apologize, we've never given him credit for his uh, song. Thank you, Michael, for making that song. But if you seriously, wanna... trim back that ficus, Michael. Nailed it. <laughs> hey. All right, so these are five-star reviews cold from Amazon. Here we go. From S. Adkins. Finally, I can enjoy Hackers on Blu-ray. What a masterpiece. Of course, I don't even have a Blu-ray player, come to think of it, but maybe one day, and when I do, I will play this disc that I purchased. Wow. Until then, I will continue <laughs> watching the ripped version from the DVD that I purchased years ago. Five stars. Oh, my God. That was written September 19th, 2015. <laughs> what? Yes. Whoa. Okay. Um, this is a great one here. Uh, 100% accurate movie is written by <laughs> Jacob Wallace. I wasn't allowed to use a touch tone phone until I was 18 because of this movie. 100% factually accurate. Five stars. Why are they making such a distinction between a touch tone phone and just a regular phone? I guess because you can do stuff with the beeps. Yeah, a touch tone phone is like you could hack stuff with just the just tones. Just the beeps. Oh, I see. That's how they're getting free calls and stuff like oh, that. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go. This one's a little bit long, but it's worth it. This is by Lynn. This has been one of my all-time favorite movies since I saw it the first time in 1995 on a blockbuster rental. Loved it then, loved the dub I made of it, love everything I rented, and loved it when I bought it and will love the Blu-ray and the special features that come with it. Wow. First paragraph done. Saw it the first time just after I did an analysis in film class and recognized it as a well-made film. <laughs> Everything about it was good. Acting, script, casting, each of the characters, even though it's not up to today's standards of what hacking is, uh, because that's funny, is a well-made film with good to excellent actors and all of them make up an ensemble that shines even today. Look, I can't address the music or the other things, but the characters are delightful. Each of the hackers had a different character so they could play off the others without interfering with their acting or personas. They were obviously having a good time. <laughs> well, here's what I, I mean. Like, yes. Uh, and, and I want to say, like, it, I, it can, like Matthew Broderick in War Games yeah. is a more compelling hacker I agree. than in this movie. Like, it, it, I want to make sure to be clear, like, there is something inherently counterculture and interesting about hackers. You know, it's just that's not what's on display really in this movie. No. It's a, it's like you know, a, or like the TV show Whiz Kids. Yes, was a more interesting version of hacking kids. I, you know, I would say that Mister uh, Mister Wizard is kind of even more interesting than hacking because he's at least giving you a little like little science hacks. Uh, yeah, these guys didn't show me anything about that quarter thing. Here, I want to finish yeah. this review. Got I wasn't. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, so, I didn't even realize we were mid review. Oh, no. I wasn't a kid when I saw this film. I was probably 50 plus and had classes in film school. Since I've been seeing oh, films Lord. since my mom carried me in the womb, I'm a film buff. Wait a minute. And you I'm particular. You cannot see from inside the womb. I'm particular about what I see. This one made me laugh. It caught and kept my attention all the way through. The characters were an ensemble. I've come to learn. <laughs> and each was well cast and played off each other and were funny and had good comic timing and took direction well. How does she know about <laughs> the oh, I don't know. Took direction well. I mean, they re this person really knows the term ensemble. The plague was great, as was God, who would become Tony Soprano's therapist. One of those amazing films with breakthrough parts for actors like Johnny Lee Miller, Elementary, and Angelina Jolie. Oh, and that was written also in September of 2015. Wow. By wow. the way, what was Lorraine Bracco's um, 
role was she, in this. She was kind of the head she of the, the company. She was, was the head of Gibson PR. <clears throat> that, oh, okay. she was the head of PR. And she was standing to make a lot of money. Half from of yeah. 25 million. Yeah. She and Fisher Stevens were skimming money from the company. Gotcha. It was basically the same scam as Superman 4. Yes. Like they were skimming fractions a of a penny Smart. off of each transaction, and it was going to equal $25 million. And then they created the Da Vinci virus to cover up that. That. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. So much stuff. So now it makes much more sense, I right? I liked it. Well, <laughs> Guys, <laughs> uh, no, I love, we're all no, one I love it. Would you guys recommend seeing uh, Hackers? I would. Uh, sure, I guess. Not, not particularly. I mean, well, there you go. I, I think it's worth the two ninety nine or whatever. But here is uh, a couple things we're just going to get out in front of the way here. A big shout out to our friend Lawrence Marcy, who wrote us a really nice uh, note about the show. And uh, we are glad that you are enjoying it. We appreciate that. June, what do you, you want to have any plug? I don't really have any plugs. Okay, that's fine. Jason, any plugs? Um, I mean, uh, not really. I mean, follow us on Twitter. Yeah, HDTGM. Um, oh, I've got a small part in the movie The Night Before, which is out right now. Seth Rogen, Anthony oh, Mackie, fun. Joe Gordon-Levitt. Very funny. Yeah, it? funny movie. Go see that. And uh, and you do play Santa in that movie. I play a Santa in that movie. And uh, did they use your real beard? Yes. Yep. Oh, really? No. <laughs> I have a, I fell for my own my own bitch. <laughs> you said it so you said so matter of fact. Oh, um, I'm gonna think about what is its mission like all the time. Oh, what is its mission is what never is left mission? me. It's the best thing of all time. A uh, big shout out to uh, Avril Halley, who co- pulled all of our clips. Nate Kylie, Marissa Zeitz, everybody here at Earwolf. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Uh, and uh, just one word to everybody out there: hack the planet. <laughs> I'm just gonna make